Hello and welcome back to RVing DIY New Beta Pro. Today it's too stinking hot outside here in Texas to be working outside, so we decided to do a project inside. So Julie and I, this is Julia, or and I are going to show you how to fix uh, some woodworking. If your if your RV or motor coach has woodworking issues, as far as scratches, nicks, holes, or unfinished wood, we're going to show you how to refinish it so it looks like it was original and is restored. The first project we have here is the edge. The edge is all chipped up because of when we put pots inside it nicks it. And for some reason they put oak underneath and then they coated the oak in vinyl. So I'm going to try to remove the vinyl and then stain the oak and have it look original. The second repair I've actually um, already did, but I'm going to show you how we did it. And that was, we used to have a paper towel dispenser, and it was mounted up here in this wood. And uh, I didn't like it because it was too obvious and it was out in the open. So I moved it back here against the um, wood side. But when I removed the dispenser, or the rack, it left two holes. And the two holes are right here. And I'm going to show you how you can fill those just as I did so it's hard to see and it blends in. The final project we're going to do is in the back and we'll have to go back and I'll show you that in the bedroom. Now we're in the back bedroom. This is the third project I'm going to work on today. And somebody at some point in time replaced this wood from a leak and then it actually leaked again because you can see the darkness under on the bottom of the wood. We're going to sand this down, refinish it so it matches the sides and it blends right on in and you'll never know that it was uh, replaced. So those are our three t uh, projects that Julie and I are going to show you and we'll get started with the one up front in the kitchen. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is I've got some sandpaper and I got 100 grit and I cut a section off of it and we're going to sand gently where the plastic was and that should remove the plastic then I'm going to get a finer grade sandpaper and sandpaper again to make it smoother then masking tape this off on the front and on the back and so when I stain it and then put a top coat on it so it matches the gloss um, I won't it'll be protected and when I mask it off this will keep Julia from getting stained also what do you think Julia is this going to work as you can see, I am sanding. I'm sanding gently going back and forth, and Julia is supervising this process. And what I'm trying to do is remove the top surface of that vinyl so that when I put the stain on, it will adhere to the wood and suck into the wood. And it's uh, just a time consuming issue. And then once I'm done with this, I'll get the vacuum and I'll vacuum up all of my sawdust I'm creating on the inside and outside and uh, we'll see if Julia thinks that the job is well enough to put the stain on and then we'll clear coat it. Speaking of clear coating, you have to decide what kind of sheen you have on your furniture, um, whether it's gloss, semi-gloss, or matte. Matte's going to be the dullest, glossy is going to be obviously the shiniest, and I chose to use a semi-gloss because this is right in between the two for giving it a, uh, a sheen to it. Now that we're done with the uh, coarse sanding of the 100 grain paper. I have most of the uh, top surface smooth and to touch and it feels pretty good. I'm going to take the next grade which is 180 grit and throw my scissors around. I'm going to take the next grade which is 180 grit and once again cut a small section off, fold it, and I'm going to sand over this again to get it even smoother. The key is to get it as smooth as we physically can. Now that I've sanded it with the 180 grit paper, we're going to go to one more grit, which is 220. I'm going to stop with the 220. So I'm going to take a piece of the 220 grit, which is very fine, and I'm going to fold it again. And I'm going to go over this one more time to get it as smooth as I can, and it almost polishes and buffs the wood. And then the next step we're going to do is get our stain, and we're going to stain it. So I'll put some protective cloths down on the floor, uh, clean up the mess, put some protective cloths down so that if the stain drips on the tile, it won't stain that in the, gr in the grout area. All right, the next step is I got the vacuum cleaner out of the back, and I'm going to um, use it and suck up all my dirt and sawdust that I've gotten inside the cabinet and on the floor so that I can get ready to put some stain onto the wood and see how it looks. 
Now we're ready to apply our stain to the wood so that the color matches and it will all blend in. I put some paper down to protect the floor from the stain and I put some paper in the back to protect it also. So we're going to open our stain very carefully. Notice I have a glove on. I like to work with that so my hands don't get um, stained from the stain. And you want to get something that you can use to stir that so that it gets mixed well because as it sits in the store it does settle out and I used a um, golden oak because this is a golden oak color so you're going to take our towel and we're going to dip it in the stain and we're just going to rub it on the top And we're going to replace our lid so that we don't spill any. And I'm going to take this I'm going to rub it again to get it blended in a little bit. You can see where some of the wood absorbed it better than others. Next step is to use masking tape. The masking tape off where we don't want our clear coat, which I'm going to spray on, so we don't get a fog or overspray onto areas that we don't want. So I use frog tape because it, um, it does a good job as far as keeping a, a straight edge and I'm looking for a straight edge on this job. Uh, cover the dried stain and wood that we've repaired with a polyurethane. And once again, I'm using or a um, semi-gloss finish instead of a satin or a gloss finish. Before you spray, you wanna make sure you have the, the spray coming out okay. So you wanna test it. And then you're just gonna go down the wood gently and put, it's better to put lighter coats instead of one big heavy coat. And we'll just let that dry and then our repair will be done. The next repair we're gonna talk about are screw holes or holes in your woodwork that you wanna plug up where something was originally mounted there. And up here, as I said before, I had the uh, paper towel dispenser mounted here. I did fill one hole and I just took the other one out to show you how I can repair it really quickly. I use a wood putty that's non-hardening, that's already colored. And this one's called Golden Oak. And you'll just have to take it out of the container and soften it in your fingers to get it pliable. And then you'll apply it to the hole and use a flat edge to smooth it out. And I just use this, which is a, um, a pot scraper for cleaning a pot in my sink actually. So I'm going to soften it with my fingers and get it pliable. And then after I get it pliable from the heat of my hand and the oils of my skin, I'm going to put it into the hole. And I'm going to push on it to get it into the hole. Take the excess off, put it back in my container. And then take my flat edge and we're going to push it down into the hole to make it smooth. And there it is. The repair is done. It's smooth. The hole is there and it's hard to see. It blends in really well with that color. And so that's an easy way to fix a hole that you have in woodwork that um, you may see. Okay, now we're back here in the bedroom. Um, to fix this wood, what we're going to do is I'm going to take some sandpaper. I'm going to sand it down and clean it up. Then the same thing, I'm going to mask off the area, protect the carpeting, and then we'll stain it, and then we'll spray clear coat over it and have it protected. So the first step then is to get some sandpaper, and I'm going to start with the same grit that I started before. I'm going to use the 100 grit paper and sand it. And when you sand it, the grain's going sideways. So that's the way you want to sand. You don't want to sand against the grain. You always want to sand with the grain. Then you have a screw there. So I have to be careful with the screw that I don't want to uh, cut my paper with it. It's going to be awkward because it's a tight area to get into, but it can be done. And we'll just take our time as we're doing it. I'm done sanding it with the 100 grit sandpaper. I'm going to go to the 180 grit, so it's a little bit finer, and do the same thing all over it again. 
Now I'm done sanding it with the 180 grit. I'm gonna use the 220 grit sandpaper and get it really smooth as possible. And then we'll vacuum this out, get all the dirt out of the way, put the masking tape on and protect the carpet and the walls from the stain. Just as before, I'm gonna use the vacuum cleaner and vacuum all the dirt in the area up and get the sawdust up and it generally clean. And then the next step is the masking. Now I'm going to mask it off so that I don't get stain on the carpet or on the walls. I also got a piece of thick paper um, that we use for printing in our printer. And I'm going to put this underneath the wood between the carpet and the wood to protect the carpet because it's going to, I need a straight edge there. Otherwise the carpet will get stained on it. And then I'll take the masking tape and go up the sides and around. And then I'll put newspaper around to keep the spray mist from going off. And I think I lost my helper, Julia. Oh, there she is. She's out there sleeping. She had a hard day uh, working with the stain, and so I guess she needs her rest. Okay, now that I have the carpet protected with the paper and the newspaper on the sides protecting from my overspray, I'm going to go get my stain, and I'm going to stain the white wood and then let it dry and then put clear coat over the top of it. Went up front and got my stain that I used before. I'm going to open it up, have my glove on so I won't get my hands messy from the stain. I'm going to take my towel, I'm going to dip it once again into the stain, and I'm going to rub it on the wood that I want to stain. And I'm going to try to get every spot of it that I can get. And you want to try to rub it with the grain, even though you always can't, like your edges, you're not going to be able to rub it with the grain. And you want to get in the corners as good as best you can. Clear coat on the polyurethane, the same that I used up front. To shake it. And once again, we're going to spray it on, but don't put too much. Light coats are better than one heavy coat. So we're going to spray across, spray it down, spray it on the bottom, spray it up. Then we're going to go back and forth. And that's all it should take. We'll let it dry and then we'll remove the masking tape. Now that I've paper. removed all the masking tape and the paper and so forth, as you can see, Julia is thoroughly exhausted from this repair, but she did a good job, yes. Um, this uh, repair has been completed and I'll put the pots back in. As far as up here on the holes, once again, that was a quick, easy repair. You can't barely even see the holes anymore where the screws were in. And that's an easy way to fix those. And now that our repairs are done, I'm sure she's going to want to go get fed and take a nap because I know she worked very hard and as everybody knows, no cat has ever been fed. We've removed the masking tape and the cardboard underneath and the uh, paper and so forth. And we're happy with the results that we've achieved. And once again, don't forget to subscribe at the bottom and like us also. And we thank you for watching Arvine. DIY newbie to pro and look forward to seeing you next week. See ya.